Hello, I'm Alec Westover, and today I'm going to tell you about my research on the Variable Processor Cup game. The P Processor Cup game on N Cups is a multi round game in which two players, the filler and the emptier, take turns adding and removing water from a set of cups. I'll represent the amount of water in a cup with the height of a rectangle. Every round, the filler is going to start by distributing P units of water amongst the cups with at most one unit to any particular cup. I've shown this here in blue. Then the emptier is going to choose P cups and remove a unit of water from each of them. Here P equals 3 and I've crossed out the fill removed by the emptier. The backlog is the fill of the fullest cup and as you can probably guess the filler wants to get the backlog high and the emptier wants to keep the backlog low. In this talk, we're usually going to be taking the side of the filler, so that means we want high backlog. And the cup game has lots of really important applications. For instance, work scheduling. As, as you probably know, on your computer, your computer is running a lot of different programs, um, also called tasks. So the work scheduling problem is you have a lot of tasks and they all have some amount of work that needs to get done but your computer only has maybe one or two processors. So the work scheduling problem is to decide how to assign the processors to tasks um, to work on these tasks. And, and the cup game is an instance of work scheduling where the scheduler's goal is to minimize the farthest behind that you are on any task. So I've, I've drawn out here um, the relationship between the cup game and work scheduling, the tasks are cups, the new work is the filler, and the allocating processors is the emptier. Now I'm going to tell you about what's already been done on the cup game. The cup game, when the filler is adaptive, has already been tightly analyzed. It's been proved that the optimal backlog here is order log n. The cup game has also been looked at for an oblivious filler, so that's a filler that's not allowed to see the emptier's actions. You can think of it as being blindfolded. So it makes a lot of sense, uh, and this theorem formalizes this, that an oblivious filler can't do quite as well. Uh, in particular, if p is less than log n, then it, it's the, the, filler, the oblivious filler here can't get more than log log n backlog which is a lot smaller than that, the backlog it was getting when it was adaptive. And now let me tell you about what I did. We asked a simple question. What if P can change? So this, this might be reasonable if you're, you have a lot of users on a, uh, all using the same server and the server has lots of processors and the number of processors that each user has to allocate to their tasks is going to change based on the other users, how many processors they're allocated. So, so P changing seems like something that could reasonably happen. Uh, we formalize this into the variable processor cup game. The emptier uh, every round in the variable processor cup game, the filler is allowed to change P. This modification seems really small. You might say, well, if there's a order log n upper bound at any fixed value of p, jumping around probably won't help you. Maybe it'll give you an extra log factor, but it probably won't do too much. However, we actually show something very surprising. Our result is that the variable processor cup game and the p processor cup game are fundamentally different. And I'll show you four theorems that we proved that uh, explain why these games are fundamentally different. These theorems are very surprising, so get ready. First of all, we proved that there's an adaptive filling strategy for achieving backlog omega n to the 1 minus epsilon for any consonant epsilon greater than 0 in quasi-polynomial running time. This is crazy! It's polynomial! We used to in the adaptive, uh, in, in the classic multiprocessor cup game, we can't get higher than logarithmic backlog, but here we're getting polynomial backlog. 
and in really reasonable time. In fact, we can even get all the way up to order and backlog. Um, however, this algorithm has really long running time, O of M factorial. Uh, so, but it's, it's still pretty neat that we can actually get all the way up to order n backlog. And you might ask, can we do any better? It turns out that uh, we can't do any better. In particular, a greedy emptier, that is an emptier that always empties from the p fullest cups. Uh, we proved that a greedy emptier never lets backlog get higher than O of n. And this matches our lower bound. Uh, so that means that uh, the filler can't do any better than order n. And we have tightly analyzed the variable processor cup game for an adaptive filler. This corollary is, uh, uh, is a corollary of the following theorem. Uh, the, a greedy emptier never uh, lets the average fill of the k full of cups exceed 2n minus k. And we have a really neat combinatorial proof of this invariant. Next, we looked at the variable processor cup game for an oblivious filler. And here, you uh, really surprisingly, it turns out that an oblivious filler can still get polynomial backlog, even though it is blindfolded and has this seemingly really big disadvantage, it can still get polynomial backlog. And it gets it with great probability in uh, the same running time as before. There is one uh, way in which this is not quite as good as the adaptive case, which is that the result only applies to greedy-like emptiers. First, let me tell you what a greedy-like emptier is, and then I'll tell you why it's not so bad that our lower bound only applies to greedy-like emptiers in the oblivious case. Uh, so a delta greedy-like emptier is an emptier such that Whenever there's two cups and their fills differ by at least delta, it can't stand to empty from the less full one and not empty from the more full one. So I think I've shown this more clearly in pictures here. Uh, it's just, there's just some limit to how ungreedy it's willing to be. Um, and greedy like emptiers are actually really important. For instance, a greedy emptier, which is zero greedy like, um, is the emptier we used in our upper bound proof on the previous slide, and just a lot of a lot of reasonable uh, emptiers are greedy like, so it's pretty cool that we're able to get a lower bound against this class of emptiers. So in the rest of the talk, I'm just going to tell you about uh, the proof of the adaptive filler lower bound on backlog. The key to this proof is what we call the amplification lemma. Let me tell you what it says. Given a strategy f for achieving backlog f of n on n cups, we can construct a new strategy f prime that achieves backlog f prime of n at least this discounted sum of f applied to some sets that are smaller than size n. And the running time of f prime is going to satisfy this relationship here. So the amplification lemma, what we're going to do with it is we're going to start with a function for achieving a small amount of backlog, and then we're going to repeatedly apply the amplification lemma to that function. And every time, that's going to cause the function to keep growing. And then eventually, it'll grow all the way up to polynomial. So that's what the amplification lemma is. Now let me tell you why it's true. The basic idea of the proof is we want to get, we're going to make a set A, and then we're going to make its average fill be really high. The way that we're going to do that is by applying F to B, roughly speaking, and then taking the cup within B that was just generated to have high fill and swapping it into A. After A has this high average fill, we can decrease P and recurse on A, and thus get even higher average fill in a subset of A. This applying f to b part is a little bit complicated though, so let me take you through that in more detail. So we make our sets a and b, 
And our filling strategy is going to be to place one fill in every cup in A every time and distribute the rest of our uh, resources amongst B according to the filling strategy F. The emptier might choose to similarly allocate its resources, allocating one fill or, or emptying from every cup in A and allocating the rest of its uh, emptying resources to B. Or it might not. But it turns out that either way, we're going to get high average fill in A. So, first of all, if the emptier neglects A in order to put more resources than the filler into B, then that means that there's some cup in A that had its fill increase. So hence, the average fill of A increases. On the other hand, if the emptier doesn't neglect A, then the resources placed into B by the filler and the emptier are matched, they're equal. So that means that we can apply F to B, we get a cup with high fill and swap it into A. Either way, we're getting high fill. And by repeating this process enough times, we're gonna get, uh, in particular, one minus delta F of N, one minus delta fill. So let me just show you what it means to apply F to B. If A is not changing because the filler and the emptier are placing one unit of one resource into each cup in A, then we can genuinely apply F to B. We can just pretend like A doesn't exist and use the filling strategy F on B. And then we get some cup with high fill and then we can take it and swap it into A and that's going to increase the average fill of A and decrease the average fill of B. And then we can repeat this a lot of times and eventually if we do this enough times we can get 1 minus delta F of N, 1 minus delta as the average fill of A. And the average fill of B is going to have sunk by this corresponding amount to maintain the average fill. So now that A has high average fill, we can decrease B and recurse on A. If we recurse on A for L levels of recursion, shrinking the problem size by a factor of delta every time, we get this sum for the backlog as desired. So that's the amplification lemma, and it turns out if we want to achieve backlog n to the 1 minus epsilon for some constant epsilon, then there's, there exists a delta, also constant, such that if we start with a function for achieving constant backlog and amplify it uh, log n times using the parameter delta, we get this function for achieving n to the 1 minus epsilon backlog. And here's a visualization of the recursive structure of that function, which is pretty neat because it has recursion in two places. It's recursively calling itself through the amplification lemma, which in turn is recursive. So this gives it this really neat fractal pattern of calling sets of cups. Furthermore, Using the same idea, but a really extremal setting of delta, specifically delta to be theta of 1 over n, we can actually get all the way up to backlog order n. However, this is going to come at the cost of having running time order n factorial. And the, the visualization of this algorithm here, its recursive structure, uh, tells you why it's taking so long and why we're getting such high backlog. It's because um, the delta is so small that we're not really recursing very much on the this branch of the tree because um, this is basically delta n cups which is a constant number of cups in particular so if we have a linear number of levels of recursion this is going to help us get our backlog order n but also that's a lot of levels that's a really deep tree, so that's why it's going to take order n factorial time. So that's pretty much how our adaptive filler lower bound on backlog works. And just to finish up the talk, I'd like to leave you with some open questions about the variable processor cup game. First, can we extend the oblivious lower bound construction to work against arbitrary emptiers instead of just greedy like emptiers? This would be pretty neat. Um, and second, are there shorter and more simple constructions for the lower bounds? That's, that's it.
And I'd just like to finish up by thanking my mentor, William Kuzmal, for being uh, super helpful with this project. And it's been a really great time. So, yeah. And also, I'd like to thank MIT Primes for, uh, that's the program that I did this through. And it's been a great program to be part of. And I'd like to thank my parents, too.